Church, please help me stand and appreciate my father and my mother. Daddy, thank you so much for this opportunity. Mommy, thank you so much. Thank you, my father. First Samuel chapter number 5, if you look with me from verse number 1. It says, Then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. It says, And when the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. But the hand of the Lord was heavy on the people of Ashdod. And he raged and struck them with tumors. But of Ashdod and his territory. It says, and when the men of Ashdod saw how it was... They said, the ark of God must not remain with us. For his hand is harsh towards us. And Dagon our God. Run to verse number 11. It says, and so they sent and they gathered together all the lords of the Philistines. And they said, send away the ark of God of Israel. Let it go back to his own place. So it does not kill us. And our people. For there was a deadly destruction. Throughout the city. And the hand of the Lord. Was heavy there. Please stand on your feet. Help me prophesy to three persons. Say neighbor. I don't know what they stole from you. I don't know who took from you. But God said to tell you. In 24 hours. They restore you or they die. Help me prophesy to three persons. They restore you or they die. Come on, say it now. They restore you or they die. My God, my God, God bless you. You may be seated. Hear me, child of God. The worst thing a man can lose in life is not money. The worst thing a man can lose in life is not a house. The worst thing a man can lose in life is not a job. The worst thing a man can lose in life, somebody say glory. Come on, say glory. And child of God, that is what Israel lost on that day. The day that the ark of God went into the battle. The Bible says, and the Philistines captured the ark of God. And they brought it down into their house of their God called Dagon. I will have you know that the Dagon, the God of the Philistines, is half fish, half human. So you see now that the ark of Israel was captured by the powers of the marine kingdom. Child of God, I want you to know tonight that the ark of God was the most significant item that Israel had. The ark of God was so significant. It was everything that Israel owned. The ark of God was the epicenter of their civilization. The ark of God was so significant that in the day that Israel took the ark into the battle, in 1 Samuel chapter 4, in verse number 13, the Bible says, Eli the high priest, he stood at the gate and his heart trembled because of the ark. And the Bible says he was waiting to hear news of what had become of the ark. And very soon somebody ran down from the battle and they said to him, Eli, Israel had lost the battle. The Bible says when he heard this, he was still okay. They said to him, your two sons, Ophna and Phineas, they are dead in battle. He was still okay. But the moment he heard that the ark of God was captured in I feel power now. In verse number 18, the Bible says he fell over backwards. He broke his neck and he died. When the news that the ark was captured, when he reached the daughter-in-law, the wife of Phineas, the Bible says when he heard that the ark of God, that, that the husband had died in battle, she was okay. But when she heard that the ark of God 
was captured. She was pregnant at that time. She went into labor. She gave birth and died on the spot. But before she died, she named the child Ichabod. That means the glory has departed. There are many hearing me today. The glory that God gave you from your childhood, that glory somehow has been tempered by the wicked. You are a graduate, but there is no glory in your life. You are doing business, but there is no glory in that business. You are doing ministry. There is no glory in that ministry. But I came to tell you by the power of the Holy Ghost, I don't know what tempered your glory but I come in the spirits of my father riding on the wings of prophecy I came to prophesy wherever they took your glory if I hear your amen tonight it is restored amen amen I say it is restored amen I say it is restored amen I come on the prophetic wings of my father I came to speak over your life tonight on this altar that glory shall be restored Amen. hear me hear me in first Samuel chapter 5 in verse number 1 the Bible says and the Philistines they took the ark of God but in verse 11 the same Philistines that took the ark of God the Bible said they gathered to return the ark in verse number 1 they took the ark but in verse 11 they returned the ark in Matthew chapter 4 in verse number 8 the Bible says, he said, then Satan take Jesus. But in verse 11, he said, then Satan leave at him. I don't know where they took your glory, but today it will be restored. If they took your glory, it shall be restored. I say it shall be restored. I say it shall be restored. Power will restore it. Glory will restore it. The Holy Ghost will restore it. Let your hands shall fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hear me. Hear me. In Exodus, in chapter number five, the Bible says in verse number one, the Bible says, and the Lord said, Moses, he said, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And the Bible says, when Pharaoh heard this in verse number three, the Bible says, and Pharaoh said, who is your God? Who is your God that I should obey him? He says, I know not your God, neither will I obey him. Child of God, not only was Pharaoh defiant, the Bible say he increased your labor rather than releasing them he increased your labor and the people cried to Moses he said Moses this is not what we ask for we ask for deliverance how come the battle increase let me pause here for a moment to tell you that anytime you begin to fight real warfare expect for things to get worse expect for reactions anytime you begin to handle altars and the foundation of your father's house there will be reactions but don't you dare despair at the face of reactions because the battle you see today is a sign that is victory tomorrow are you hearing me church and the Bible says and when Moses the people cried to Moses and in verse 23 of, of Exodus chapter 5 the Bible said they cried to Moses and Moses cried to God in Exodus chapter 6 in verse number 1 the Lord said to Moses he said now tell somebody now he said now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh he said when I am done with Pharaoh with his own heart he will drive you away from this land in verse number 3 the Lord said something to Moses he said I appeared unto Abraham unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name almighty God he said but by my name Jehovah was I not known. He said there is a name. There is a side of me. I am not revealed until now. I reveal myself unto Abraham. I 
as Elohim, I revealed myself unto Isaac as El Shaddai. He said, I have another side. I did not reveal myself to Isaac as by this name because Isaac was not facing Pharaoh. I did not reveal it to Abraham because Abraham was not facing Pharaoh. He said, in order for Pharaoh to let you go, there is another side of me that must be revealed today. There is another side of me. Child of God, this side of God is what we call the judgmental side. Tell somebody the judgmental side. Oh yes, and the Bible says, and when he said this to Moses, he said, go back to Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 4, in verse 23, he sent Moses back to Pharaoh, he said, go and make Pharaoh an offer, he said, Israel is my firstborn, if he will not let Israel go. I will kill your firstborn. Child of God. There is another side of God that must be revealed today. That side of God, I like to call it Jehovah the Mafia. Tell somebody Jehovah the Mafia. He is the God that maketh an offer that the devil can refuse. He is the God that maketh an offer that no Tibia can refuse. He said, go and tell Pharaoh, you are holding my firstborn, but I make you an offer. You release my firstborn or I kill your firstborn. Child of God, this side of God is what Hannah told us in First Samuel in chapter 2 and 6. He said, the Lord killeth and he maketh a life. It was this mafia side of God that God sent to Abimelech in Genesis 20 in verse number 3. The Lord appeared to Abimelech. He said, Abimelech, you are a dead man because you have taken the wife of another man. In verse number 7, he said, Abimelech, I make you an offer. He said, if you don't let his wife go, he said, restore the wife so that you may live. He said, but if you don't restore, you Sir Shirley. Hey. He said, restore the wife. If you don't restore the wife, you shall surely die. I have your neighbor said Jehovah the Mafia. Come on, say Jehovah the Mafia. He's going to make your enemy tonight an offer. An offer they can't refuse. God sent me to tell you. He's giving your enemies 24 hours. They release your husband or they die. They release your star or they die. They release your marriage or they die. They release your children or they die. Say release my house. Are you tired? Are you tired? Oh. Hear me? <laughs> I am talking about the mafia side of God. Because to you, God is a good God. To you, God is a good God. But you see that devil that has vowed that you will never marry. The God of my father we oh. appear tonight oh. in their dream. Oh. That they are holding your destiny. He will make an offer, an offer they can't refuse. You release my daughter, or you die. You release my son, or you die. You release their star, or you die. You release their destiny. I profess a strong man holding your destiny. I profess they release you, or they die. Amen. Hear me? Hear me? I like what Abimelech said. The Bible says Abimelech said, Lord, I took it by error. I did not know that the woman was married. And God said to Abimelech, in the system of law, ignorance is not a defense. You take her by error, you die by correction. Child of God, I don't know who took from you. But today, the God of my father, he will appear to them. They release your house or they die. Amen. Hear me? Hear me? The Bible says, when they were going 
going to restore in first Samuel in chapter number six in verse number three when they were going to restore the ark they consulted their diviners they consulted with their with their idols they say how do we return the ark and the bible says and the diviner said to them he said when you are returning the ark make sure you return it with trespass offering tell somebody interest is coming with that restoration tell somebody interest is coming with that restoration are you hearing me church in exodus chapter 20 when you read in verse 14 when abimelech was going to restore sarah the bible says when he was going to restore sarah he gave abraham camel he gave him goods he gave him animals he gave him land in verse number 16 he added money he said add money to this thing he said take your wife back child of god hear me as i tell you restoration is not complete until there is interest restoration is not complete until there is payment of arrears i am here to tell you i don't know what you lost god said to tell you when you lost one you are getting double i said you are getting double I said you are getting double. Amen. Where you lost 10, oh. you are getting a hundred. God said to tell you, there is a restoration coming to you. It shall be good measure. Amen. It shall be pressed down. Amen. It shall be shaken together. Amen. It shall be running over. Oh. You don't serve a dead God. Oh. You serve a mighty God. <laughs> He's the same yesterday. Oh. He's the same today. <laughs> He's the same forever. Yeah. When God says yes, yeah, yeah. no man can say no. Oh. When God lifts you up, oh. no man can pull you down. Yeah. God is on your side. Oh. Power on your side. Oh. Miracles on your side. Yeah. Let one hand shot fire. Fire. Raise another hand shot fire. fire. Raise one leg shot fire. fire. Raise another leg shot fire. fire. Insanity. 
calamity, spiritual rascality, Holy Ghost brutality, no nonsensity. You jam me, you die. You jam me, you scatter. You manage on me. I prophesy in 24 hours. Anyone holding your testimony, they release it. Tell somebody power. Tell somebody power. That is what the Bible says. In Psalm chapter 66, the Bible says, How terrible thy are in all thy ways. He said, For through thy greatness have thy power, the enemies will submit to you. Tell somebody power. Tell somebody power. In Exodus chapter number 15, in verse number 6, he said, The right hand of God. His power in Deuteronomy chapter number 8, in verse number 18, he said, I am the Lord thy God that gave thee power to make wealth. My Bible says in 2 Samuel, in chapter 22, in verse number 33, he said, The Lord is my strength and my power. In Job chapter number 26, in verse number 12, the Bible says, By his power. Power. He parted the Red Sea in Job chapter 37 in verse number 23. The Bible says as touching the Almighty he said there is no searching him out for his excellence tell somebody power in Psalm chapter 29 in verse number 4 he said the voice of the Lord is powerful the voice of the Lord is full of majesty in Psalm chapter 62 in in verse number 11, he said, One God has spoken twice. Have I heard? Hey, power belong to God. In Psalm 63, in verse number 2, he said, To see thy power and thy glory as I've seen in the sanctuary. In Psalm 66, in verse number 3, the Bible says, How terrible art thou in all thy ways, for through the greatness of thy power, thy people shall submit to you. My Bible says, in Psalm 110, in verse number 3, the Bible Bible says, in the days of his power, he said, the people shall be willing. In Psalm 150, in verse number one, the Bible said, praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. In Isaiah chapter 40, in verse number 29, he said, he giveth power to the faint and them that have no might, he increases strength. In Jeremiah 32, in verse number 17, he said, Our Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, and nothing shall be too hard for you to do. In Micah chapter number 3, in verse number 8, the prophet hollered, I am full of power by the Spirit of God. In Nahum chapter number 1, in verse number 3, he said, God is slow to anger, but his power is very great. In Matthew chapter number 6, in verse number 13, he said, Thine, O God, is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Somebody say forever. In Matthew chapter number 10, in verse number 1, he called his disciples and he gave them power over unclean spirits and to heal every manner of disease. My Bible says in Matthew 28, in verse number 18, when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. In John chapter number 1, in verse number 12, to them that believe him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. In Luke chapter number 1, in verse 35, the Bible says, and the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. In Luke chapter number 4, in verse number 14, the Bible says that Jesus Christ, he returned from the wilderness with the power of the 
spirit and his fame went abroad in Luke chapter number 5 in verse number 17 upon a certain day Jesus Christ he was teaching in the synagogue and the doctors of the law were present and the power of God were present to heal in Luke chapter number 10 in verse number 19 he said behold I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy my bible says in Luke chapter number 24 in verse number 49 he said tarry here until you be endured with power from on high my bible says in Acts chapter number 1 in verse number 8 he said you shall receive power at that that the Holy Ghost shall come upon you my Bible says in Acts chapter number 4 in verse number 33 he said with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them in Acts chapter number 10 in verse number 38 he said how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good my Bible says in Philippians chapter number 3 in verse number 10 that I may know him in the power of his resurrection my Bible says in 2nd Timothy in chapter 1 and 7 the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of timidity but of power of love and the sound mind in first Corinthians in chapter number two in verse number four my speech and my teaching was not in enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and power my Bible says in first Corinthians in chapter number two in verse number five that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man but in the power the spirit my bible says in first corinthians chapter number four in verse number 20 for the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but it is power my bible says in romans chapter number one in verse number 16 god he said for i am not ashamed of the gospel of our lord jesus christ for it is the power of god unto salvation in Romans chapter 13 in verse number 1 let every soul be subject to a higher power for there is no power but the power that be of God my Bible says in Romans 15 in verse number 19 he says so that with mighty signs and wonders and by the power of the spirit I have fully preached the gospel from Elysium round about my Bible says in faith in Ephesians chapter 6 in verse number 10 he said finally brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might I prophesy after today power for restoration it will fall on you amen 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Hey. Glory to God. I hope you were blessed by today's message. And if you're ever in the Houston area, would like to invite you to our live Sunday service. We promise we'll make you feel right at home. God bless you. See you next time.